My youngest grandson as a little bloke gave me the name Pan. I liked it, hence the name the Pan Superior. Its cylindrical fuel tanks bear the faintest resemblance to a 1930s English motorcycle, the Bruff Superior. Ah, those were the days when men were men and their bikes had no rear suspension. The bike is made of plywood. Plywood is a good engineering material and fun to work with. Combine it with a few parts and brackets made out of bits and pieces of scrap aluminium, parts which fall within my skill set and the scope of my workshop, then there is little in this project that I couldn't make myself. The mainframe comprises two 12mm thick profiled pieces laminated together with a fibreglass membrane between making it 25mm thick overall. The three fuel tank support brackets on each side of the mainframe are kept in line with an aluminium conduit while gluing. The conduits are used for carrying the kill switch wiring and the throttle cable. This one inch diameter steel tube through the mainframe acts as both the rear suspension pivot point and the rider's footrests. Both triangulated chainstays are drilled together as a match pair to ensure alignment accuracy. A tie rod passes through the centre of the chain tension at the pivot tube. When assembled, this tie rod combined with the rear wheel axle and the suspension strut spindle ensure both sides are firmly clamped together. This teardrop shaped piece was an afterthought. It ensures lateral stability by closing the gap between the triangulated chainstays and the seat brackets. It also gives additional support to the boss that carries the rear suspension unit spindle. 12mm square section plywood strips provide additional stiffness to the chainstays. These permanently attached aluminium discs spread the load to prevent the plywood from being crushed when tightening the rear wheel axle. Threaded thick wall aluminium tube provide the anchor points for the cantilevered front engine mounting. A round bush through the mainframe provides the anchor point for the rear engine mounting. The only reason it is brass is because that's what I had in the scrap metal bin. Low friction plastic spacers are used between the mainframe and the rear suspension movements. Oh dear, I hadn't realised it was her brand new kitchen breadboard. The drawings intended for my use only are just guidelines. They are sketchy and weren't always strictly adhered to. Some changes did happen. But if you have the inclination and are looking for a project, go for it. The front and rear wheel discs are screwed together prior to drilling the pilot holes for the 2 inch hole saw holes in the corner of each cutout. Once the laminated bearing hub blocks are glued to the discs, the outside diameter of the discs are turned in the wood lathe to a push fit to the inside diameter of the wheel rim. The wood turning lathe is modified with blocks under the headstock to accommodate the 24 inch wheel rims. To aid concentricity between the rear wheel bearing housing and this sprocket when drilling the common mounting holes, a turned wooden bung is used. Because the rear suspension pivot point and the final chain drive lay shaft centres are in different positions, chain tension will change slightly as they pass through different arcs. A spring loaded chain tensioner is used to accommodate this difference. An override bar restricts the chain tension travel in the opposite direction during bump starts and when coasting on a downhill run. This is the rear brake pedal and this is the rear brake outer cable termination bracket. This long roofing screw secures the one inch diameter footrest tube. With the aid of this spreadsheet and using basic rule of thumb calculations, performance and gear ratios are indicated. Just look at him go, not bad for an old bloke. The world's fastest purple plywood moped is now fully assembled. After this high speed flat pack assembly, I deserve a test run.